Well, good morning. It's great to be with you once again for our service today here online. It's September already. As we return from our holidays, having taken breaks many of us weren't expecting or planned. Some of us I know haven't been able to get away. But we do start to turn at this time of year our attention towards things like harvest, Remembrance Sunday, and even with a whisper, Christmas. Now these all may look quite different this year, but as we see in our reading this morning, where two or three gather in God's name together, there God is also. And so as we gather this morning, whether that was earlier in our churches at St Anne's or St Mary's, or here now via this recorded service, take heart that God is gathered with us too. So welcome to you. Thank you for joining us in this way. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Rev Dave, and I'm joined today by our curate, Rev Richard, who will reflect further on this passage from Matthew. Rachel, our children's worker, is going to look at a part of the story from Noah, and others of our congregation have also contributed with readings, the sung worship and prayers. So as this goes out today at our 10.30 watch party on Facebook, do please leave us your comments of encouragement to those taking part and say hello. If you're joining at another point or on our YouTube channel, then we hope you enjoy worshipping with us in this way today as well. So as we come into God's presence, let's just take a moment's quiet. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. So to begin our song worship this morning, we're going to sing a song that reminds us that no matter what, Jesus loves us. This video we're going to watch is one I made before the summer for school worship, so I apologise in advance. Jesus says to me, I love you. Jesus 
I have no words. So last Wednesday and Thursday, children in our community started to return to school at both Cockney and at St Anne's. After six months of homeschooling, there were excited and nervous children, ecstatic and cautious parents, and cautious teaching staff. It was a privilege to have been able to be in school on that first day and pray for staff in the school. It also means that as we return to this new normal, we're starting to think about our youth and children's groups starting up again here in the churches. Ignite will resume again in the next few weeks. But this morning, once again, it's brought to us by Rachel, our children's worker, and she's reflecting on the story of Noah as he contemplated a new beginning after the flood. After 40 days, Noah opened a window he had made in the ark and sent out a raven, and it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove to see if the water had receded from the surface of the ground. But the dove could find nowhere to perch, because there was water over all the surface of the earth. So it returned to Noah in the ark. He reached out his hand and brought it back to himself in the ark. He waited seven more days and again sent out the dove from the ark. When the dove returned to him in the evening, there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Then Noah knew that the water had receded from the earth. He waited seven more days and sent the dove out again, but this time it did not return to him. Our God is a great big God. Hello everyone, welcome to Ignite. I hope you've had a great summer and we are now starting a new September term. So I hope your first couple of days or few days at school have gone well. I'd love to hear all about it. Um, today in Ignite we are, we've just heard the reading of Genesis about um, Noah and his ark. And today I would like to focus on this really familiar story, but part of that story is really significant for what we are experiencing at the moment as we go back to school. So let's just watch this next clip and pay particular attention to how Noah knew that it was safe to leave the ark. God's story, Noah. So part of God's story is about Noah, and it begins like this. First, let's start at the beginning. God created the world to be the most perfect home, with mountains as playgrounds and oceans as swimming pools. Then God made people to be like him and to live in it. And he wanted us to play with animals and explore jungles and be close to him forever. It was perfect. But instead, people ran away from God. They hurt each other. They ruined the perfect home God had built for them. The Bible says this made God really, really sad. So sad, in fact, that God decided to wash away all the evil and meanness and cruelty in the world by sending a huge flood to destroy everything, to get rid of all the wrong things and the people who kept doing them. But there was one guy who followed God. That's right, Noah. God had a special rescue plan for Noah. He told Noah to build a big boat called an ark to stay in during the flood. It had to be big enough for Noah's wife and kids and at least two of every kind of animal on earth. So, pretty big. And Noah had to build it in the middle of dry land, which means his neighbors probably thought he was crazy, or at least a little weird. Kids, sometimes following God looks a little weird. We're okay with that. Anyway, looking weird didn't stop Noah. He knew he needed to be rescued. So he finished the ark and waited for God to bring the animals. And God brought them all right. Just imagine what those neighbors thought when they saw an entire zoo strolling through their yards. When Noah's family and all the animals were inside, God shut the door. 
then the Bible says God opened the bottom of the ocean and the windows of the sky. We don't know what that means exactly, but we do know it was tons of water. It rained like this for 40 days and 40 nights. And the rain wasn't the worst of it. Once the water stopped, it didn't go away. Noah and his family sat cooped up, floating in the ark for over a year, just waiting. And waiting and waiting. Did we mention they waited? Well, when the tops of the mountains finally started to show, Noah sent out a dove to see if there was dry land. There wasn't. A week later, he sent the dove again. The water was going down. A week later, Noah sent out the dove one last time. It didn't come back, which meant it had found a home. Noah and his family could leave the ark. The very first thing Noah did was build an altar to worship God and thank him for his rescue. And God made a covenant with Noah, which is like a very special promise. God promised never to destroy the earth with a flood even though he knew humans would keep right on doing wrong things that made him sad. God put a rainbow in the sky to remind Noah that he would definitely keep this promise. And just like God rescued Noah, he would one day send his own perfect son, Jesus, to earth. Jesus would take the punishment of all people. Then, God could be close to everyone who wants to follow him. And that's the story of Noah. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God made a perfect home. People ruined it. God was sad. He planned a flood and a rescue. Noah built an ark. Animals came. It rained. Noah waited. Dry land appeared. Noah worshiped God. God made a promise. God sent Jesus to rescue us. And that's a part of God's story. So what sign did God give Noah to let him know that it was safe to leave the ark and that it was time to move on to the next chapter? Can you remember what bird was sent out and what bird came back? And how many times did that bird come back? Yeah, it was, it was a dove that was sent out and first it returned quickly because it had nowhere to land. So Noah knew that there was no dry land and it wasn't time. The second time, it came back with an olive branch in its beak. So Noah knew that there was dry land out there and there was things growing, but the dove had come back. So maybe it wasn't quite time to leave the boat. Maybe things were just starting to grow and that dove had come back because it knew it needed to be fed by Noah. It wasn't quite ready to leave the ark. But the third time that the dove was released, it didn't come back. So Noah knew that the dove had found a new home and the dove was safe and it was now time for him and his family to leave the ark and go and start this new chapter. And does that remind you of anything that we've been through just recently? So we've spent all this time at home with our families, haven't we? And gradually we've started to go out a little bit more. But this week, We've gone out, we've been told it's been safe to go to school. So that's what we've done. And we put our trust in God that this is all part of God's plan. And that we are, well, the first thing that Noah did when he left the ark was he said thank you to God. So I think it would be great if we could all be very thankful in our prayers today. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that we are able to go back to school. Thank you that you have given us signs to say that it is time for us to go back to school, to be back with our friends, to be back with the teachers. And dear Lord, thank you for keeping us safe throughout this time. In your name, Amen. So thank you for the reading from the Rumbles and thank you to Rachel.
Please do continue to pray for both Rachel and Rachel as they lead our children's and youth work and for our ongoing plans as we start to open up our churches for services that as we do that we have God's grace on our plans and as we meet to face to face in all ages that we have God's blessing and are following God's calling in all that we do. Each week we take an opportunity to set our heart right with God and we call that confession. It's a time to bring to mind those things that we think, say and do that aren't pleasing to God and those things that we failed to do that we know we should have done. So why not now just take a moment to reflect on your week and bring to God those things that you need to say sorry for in your own heart and then we'll do that together. So Lord God, our maker and our redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. As we think about those things that we've done wrong, we know that we've willfully misused your gifts of creation. And so we ask, Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. Lord, we remember that we have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. And so we ask, Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We know, Lord, in our hearts that there have been times where we have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. And so we ask, Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. Jesus, we know that we've heard the good news, but have failed to share that with others. And so we say, Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. And God, our Father, we know we have not loved you with all our heart nor our neighbours as ourselves. And once again, we say, Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We know you are a God who loves us and forgives us. And so may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us Assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So let me tell you today, you are God's forgiven child. And our second reading this morning is read by Charlotte from the Gospel of Matthew. And then we're joined by Rev Richard as he brings us God's word for today. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you've won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. 
If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen, even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Whenever two or three people are gathered together in my name, a Bible verse is sure to be taken out of context. That's a bit harsh, actually. But in my experience, you normally hear this verse quoted when not many people have turned up for church on a Sunday. And we say, well, when two or three people are gathered together, there I am in the midst of them. That's true, of course, but as we heard in the reading, the context of this verse is actually quite different from that. As we look at these verses today, I've got three focus words for us. Context, confront and community. First then, context. Well, in Matthew's Gospel, these verses come directly after the story of the 100 sheep, which shows us so wonderfully how it's God's will that anyone who goes astray should not be forgotten or abandoned, but should be sought, found and brought home. So when Jesus says here, if a brother or sister sins, it is in the context of someone going astray, of taking the wrong turn, at risk of becoming lost from God's love. So what is sin? A sin is any time that we put anything before God in our lives, any time we place ourselves in charge of our lives rather than God. From this definition, it's obvious that we all sin and sin regularly. No one can say that they are without sin or live up to the standards of God or of heaven. If we continue living in this way, we go astray from God's love, like the sheep in the parable. But instead of becoming a stumbling block to keep us from God, the things we do wrong should instead be revealed to us, leading us to repent leading us back to the love of God and his flock. For this to happen, we need to be confronted by our sin. So this leads me on to the second focus word today, which is confront. Our reading today gives the church the commission to be like God, the shepherd, in the story of the 100 sheep, to join God's work of seeking the sheep that are lost by pointing out the fault of a Christian brother or sister, just the two of you alone. In British culture, people often don't like to confront. We are all far too polite, or rather we're far happier to talk to other people about someone's faults rather than to the person themselves. To confront, however, need not be confrontational in a bad way. When I go and see my spiritual director and I've described to him a problem I've been having, he will simply confront me with the question, so what does God think about that? Just that one simple question will reveal to me the source of my anxiety how I've neglected to pray, neglected to rely on God or act with his love in the situation that I'm in. I'd encourage us all to ask that question of one another. If you both believe in God and you've been talking about a problem that you've been having, ask each other, what does God think about this? Because as we ask that question, 
we become confronted if we've gone astray and we can realize how we can come back to the flock. If this doesn't happen, however, then we may need our third focus word, which is community. We live, of course, in a very individualistic culture. Everyone is at liberty to decide for themselves their own course of action. And this is correct, of course, and preferable to a tyranny of elites or institutions. But we, as the church, however, base our values on the gospel of Jesus, and we try to ensure we remain faithful to that teaching by seeking God together as a community. So this passage says that if we believe someone is going astray, but they haven't listened to us, then we consult others for a second or third opinion on the matter. If it's still decided the person is going astray but hasn't listened to that smaller group, the whole community is called to decide. And if the whole community isn't listened to, then the person who is considered should be now considered an outsider, but in the hope that one day they will return to the flock. Such situations of such confrontation are thankfully quite rare, but even rarer are the times in which such situations are conducted in a proper manner, without descending into gossip or side-taking, in which listening for the voice of God takes a back seat. Dealing with such confrontation in the right way requires great strength and humility on both sides. So my challenge to us today is do we, in our context, have the courage to confront or be confronted ourselves in our church communities? In our context, do we have the courage to ask one another that simple question, what does God think about all this? In our context, do we have the courage to do our part in finding those who have strayed or recognise when we ourselves have strayed? May we be, be brought back and restored to God's love in God's flock. Amen. May it be so in our community.
yesterday today the same the flames will roar in the face of hell and when the darkness shakes but it is well with me it is well with me your flames will roar in the face of hell and when the darkness shakes lord it is well with me it is well with me. The flames will roar in the face of hell, and when the darkness shakes, Lord, it is well with me. It is well with me. Send your fire, send your rain. Promise to never flood the world again, cause when I'm drowning, in my pain, I know that you will forever reign. Yesterday, today the same. Oh, yesterday, today the So thank you to Charlotte and Richard, and thank you as always for those who have given financially to the church, be that by standing order through one-off gifts or using the envelope scheme. We are eternally grateful for all that you're able to give financially to the work at St Anne, St Mary's and St Winifred's. And now we're just gonna pray for all those gifts that have been received this week. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you and of your own do we give you. Lord, thank you for all those gifts given this week. May they be used wisely in your service. Amen. And now please join us in prayer as Pat leads us. As we begin our time of prayer, let us focus on Jesus' words from Matthew's Gospel. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. Lord, together we come to worship, individuals as one in your name. Bring us now in this moment to know you, to work for you, and to build your church in this community. Amen. Eternal, ever-living God, we pray for those who this day need our prayers. Those we see around us. Those we have left at home family and friends, near and far, strangers and communities we will never meet or know, but whose peril we hear of and see in the media, those whose life is ebbing away, consumed by old age, frailty, illness or neglect, those who grieve deeply for lives and loves lost, those who cause grief and chaos in society and who live seemingly with different values from ours. We pray for them and their victims and their families. For those who are forgotten, unnoticed, unloved, unmissed. Lord God, in your abundance of mercy, hear these and all our prayers. This morning's story of Noah reminds us that even when we fail him, God, the creator of all things, still provides. As the season of harvest draws to a close and the last of the crops are gathered in, we celebrate and give thanks for the blessings harvest brings, whilst never forgetting those whose harvests are poor or non-existent.
when we hear the gentle sound of the rain watering the earth. Help us to remember the thirst of those whose land is dry. When we feel the warmth of the sun on our faces, help us to remember the plight of those locked away in darkness. When we buy the fruit of the world's harvest, help us to remember the hunger of those whose basket is empty. When we enjoy the ease of communicating around the world, help us to remember those who are isolated from their friends. When we relax in times of holiday, help us to remember those who have to work without ceasing. When we celebrate our blessings at harvest time, help us to remember those who experience disaster. May our remembering reactivate our conscience and result in a renewed commitment to Christ in our neighbour. Let there be harvest in the hearts of children, women and men. We pray for those who are spiritually starved who long for meaning in their lives and who need to belong. Give to your church patience and energy, boldness to speak out and the ability to listen. Let there be harvest in our own lives and in the lives of those we know and love. We pray for ourselves that whatever difficulties we face, our lives may be grateful and joyful. We pray for a harvest of deepened love, more faithful discipleship, and a desire to work with you to reap and sow your harvest here in our church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gathered together now, May we be faithful in ordinary things. May our priorities be reshaped. May our hearts remain open. May we hear again your word of life and the message we should live by. May we hear again your call to us and choose to mould our lives to you. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So drawing our prayers together, let's say the words that our Saviour taught us, the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Going forward, we will now be holding live services at 9.30 in both St Anne's and St Mary's each week. We will be alternating Holy Communion at one of these services and a service of the Word in the other. Services at St Anne's will be live streamed on our Facebook page each week and then made available later in the day on our YouTube channel for those who still do not yet feel able to join us in person. All services will require those attending to wear face masks. During the week, we'll continue to live stream morning prayer each day at 9am on the St Anne's page. And again, it will be made available to the St Mary's page and the YouTube channel later in the day. And from this coming Friday, we'll also be hosting an in-person morning prayer at the back of St Anne's if you're able to join us for this. And this will be live streamed from the church. The church will remain open each Friday until 10am for anyone wishing to come in for private prayer. We're going to meet again for coffee after our service. If you'd like to join us, then that's on Zoom, and the details on how to do that are in the comments below. 
Grab yourselves a cuppa, join us for a natter if you're able. Regular or new to St Anne's, you would be very welcome. During the lockdown period, we hosted a number of quiz nights on Zoom. This has proved popular with many, and so as the nights are starting to draw in, from Wednesday the 16th of September, we'll be hosting our online quiz fortnightly until Christmas. Please join us if you're able and email revdave at stanthansvicarathotmail.com for joining instructions. And finally, if it's been your birthday this week, then happy birthday. We hope you manage to celebrate in a meaningful way and this is for you. Like never before 
And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forever Thank you, Lydia, for our final song. There are 10,000 reasons that we need to be grateful and so many more. Thank you for all those who've contributed today to our service. Do join us at coffee and a chat afterwards on Zoom if you're able. This week, we're going to be live streaming morning prayer each day at 9 a.m. on the St. Anne's Facebook page, and it's going to be available on the St. Mary's page and on our YouTube channel later in the day. On Friday, we're going to be live streaming from St Anne's Church itself and we're hoping that a few people will join us for that and you're welcome to come for 9 o'clock for morning prayer and between 9 and 10 for private prayer in the church. But for now, the final blessing. The Lord God Almighty is our Father. He loves us and tenderly cares for us. The Lord Jesus Christ is our saviour. He's redeemed us and will defend us to the end. The Lord, the Holy Spirit is among us. He will lead us in God's holy way and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. So take care and have a good week.